This wasn't sponsored anyway, so that's good because uh, I don't think that that would fly in a contract. Hello, welcome or welcome back to Classics with a Quirk, where I talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. If this is the kind of content that you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. Really quick before I get started, my introduction is super duper long, but I try to explain a lot about what I'm doing here. So if you want to skip to straight to the review, like please feel free to do so. Timestamps will be down below in terms of like when that starts. But I also did want to like preface this video with what I'm about to say, which is a very long introduction that ends up kind of being a disclaimer, but I wanted to just tell you how I stood and, and why I'm doing this video and why I accepted this bag for free. I did not pay anything for this bag, but my my impressions so okay so but here's the timestamp in case you want to skip to, to the actual talking about the bag okay so <laughs> i'm a little bit nervous to film this video but i really wanted to film this video because i felt that there wasn't enough information out there about the product i'm going to be talking about which i'm going to just tell you Teddy Blake, right? So we probably, if you're in the luxury space, if you're in the handbag community or even beauty community at all, you've probably seen Teddy Blake advertisements. You've seen influencers talk about Teddy Blake, a lot of micro influencers talking about Teddy Blake up to very big influencers or, or YouTubers, not necessarily influencers. I'm certainly not an influencer. I'm just someone who does YouTube. <laughs> But it, it, Teddy Blake is something that I think a lot of us have heard of. Maybe we've been interested in them because somebody that we watch have, have talked about it. We've looked them up online. And so I was approached by Teddy Blake. I think, you know, they send out like those form letters to like anybody, honestly. I was approached by Teddy Blake asking if I wanted to receive a free bag from them to give uh, an honest, honest review on. And I will be honest, I uh, originally thought about saying no. Uh, because I I didn't really have an interest in Teddy Blake bags. They they didn't particularly appeal to me. A lot of their designs are dupe-esque. I don't really have a problem with dupes, but something about the designs of Teddy Blake, like they also, a lot of their bags look really fiddly. You know, the clasps look fiddly, not unlike some fiddly clasps from other well-known brands. Hermes, get out and say it, like Teddy Blake used to be known for making Hermes dupes, like exact dupes, and they've since moved away from that. Emma Anders actually many years ago reviewed a, a dupe Birkin, I think it was, from Teddy Blake. I, I believe so. Fine, okay, you know, sure. That, mm, that's, that's what they want to make, that's what people will buy, okay, sure, whatever. I, I didn't really have an interest in that. But then I thought, you know, I, at this point in my YouTube career, have been kind of cultivating an audience and a reputation, I think, around how I have learned, you know, my knowledge about luxury leathers or leathers in general, but sharing my knowledge about luxury leathers across different brands from Coach to Chanel. And I thought, you know, what if I accepted this bag and I made a genuine, honest review about what I thought about the bag? And I felt that that would be a good video that this is an unsponsored video. They did they did send me this bag for free, but this is an unsponsored, totally honest opinion video about my initial impressions of the bag, my after post initial, like after thinking about it and looking at it and observing it impressions of the bag and my experience with Teddy Blake in general from looking things up on their website, what information is out there to find, what information isn't out there to find. So I, I thought that this might be a good video because it's, one that I don't, I haven't really seen. I haven't really seen a video about Teddy Blake that isn't glowing, you know? And I want to state that my opinions are my opinions, you know? I don't want to say that another person who's reviewing Teddy Blake is, is not telling the truth, is not being truthful about their experience or their observations, but these are my opinions and my observations about a, a topic that I am fairly knowledgeable in, which is leathers and construction and craftsmanship and materials. And so this might be a very controversial video, but I don't mean it to be. I just want to be honest. And I want to be honest, especially because Teddy Blake prides itself on talking about the fact that it's a luxury brand, that it uses luxury leathers that are handmade bags from Italy by Italian artisans. They pride themselves on that. That's how they sell their their product. And they also charge fairly high prices for a contemporary brand. Like, I don't think Telly Break is trying to tell people that they're like a, a luxury designer brand. Like, I don't think they're trying to compare themselves to like Chanel or, or anything. That, that's kind of silly. But I do think that they're trying to say that they're more luxurious than say like Coach or, or Marc Jacobs or, or something like that. And 
I'm a little nervous about this video, but I, I really, I didn't even plan to film today. I didn't even plan to film a video today. I got the box and I was like, okay, well, my filming day is, you know, in a few days from here, so I'll, I'll wait. But I wanted to open the box and at least see the bag just to, to start. And then I, I did, and I'm like, I need to make a video right now, actually. I think I need to do right now. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> this is my honest, truthful opinion about how I feel about this product that I received. And this might be just this particular bag or, or this particular style of bag, but the product I received, my observations of the product initially for, for what it is, but also for what it's priced at, what Teddy Blake tells people that they are and represents themselves as, as well as my thoughts as someone who knows about leather and construction and craftsmanship and all of those things combined. Is that This is a very long introduction. I think I've been talking for like 11 minutes. So anyway, First initial impression. So I got the bag in a in a brown box, you know, a cardboard box. It didn't have any like a thing on it to say that it was from a luxury brand, which is good because you want to be discreet when you're getting an expensive product. And the box itself was nondescript. And then inside the box was a Teddy Blake white box that had like brown. And this is the box. This is the box that showed up at my door inside the brown box. And the first thing I noticed actually is that the box itself is kind of real beaten up. So it, you might not, you can see here, like the corners are ripped on this side and also on this side, actually. So they're both beaten up. The box itself is kind of bashed in the front here. And inside the box is this like weird wavy paper. So it doesn't like, it does, the box itself does not look very well constructed. It doesn't really look luxury it just it looks like a box which is fine i think that this might be fully recyclable i don't know though because it doesn't say that so I, I don't know if it's a fully recyclable box recyclable packaging usually tends to be flimsier which is fine like if they tell me that this is a flimsier box because it's fully recyclable okay cool like i'll accept that but it didn't really you know tell me luxury by opening it up and, and seeing all the, the damage. And then inside the box, there was like a little bit of this uh, brown wrapping paper and then the bag, which was very, very heavily wrapped in plastic. And th that's fine. I mean, it's, it's one thing to be recycling your packaging and use less packaging, but then also heavily wrap your bag in plastic. Like I, I don't mind it when bags like luxury items are wrapped in plastic. It does protect them from the elements. Cushioning is always good, but if you're trying to be recyclable friendly, then a recyclable box m meshed with a bunch of plastic, it doesn't really super make sense to me. So it was a little bit like odd, but I'm not gonna be mad about the plastic packaging used if you're talking about like protecting the item, sure. So I'm gonna show you a picture of like what it looked like all packaged in the plastic. And then I opened the plastic packaging to remove the bag. And the first thing I noticed, I'm, I'm, and I was trying to go in like totally open mind. I wanted to receive this this bag, and I actually, I even, I even originally said, you know what, I'll, I probably won't keep it. I was planning on doing a given it giveaway with the bag, because I, I don't really need more bags that are gifted pieces. If I like something, I buy it. So I plan to um, give the give the bag away. So I, I'm going to talk about that in a second, but or a minute or several minutes. I'm not sure. I opened the packaging, the plastic packaging, and the first thing I noticed was, oh, that does not smell good. It, it didn't smell very good at all. It smelled incredibly chemically. It smelled very uh, factory. I have the bag sitting here right now, and it's it's giving off a, still a very strong chemically odor. It's been airing out for about two or three hours now. It's not a pleasant smell. It does not smell like leather. It smells very like uh, not good quality plastic. You know what I mean? And I, I did not, I don't appreciate that type of smell in any good. So I, it just, it's, it's not, it's not good friends. And again, this might just be my bag. It might be my bag, something happened with the packaging or something, but it, it does, it does not smell like leather at all. And it, it, in fact, it smells very chemical. So that's the first thing I noticed. And I mean, after the packaging, you know, of the bag, that's the first thing I noticed. Then, you know, it came in a dust bag and this is the dust bag that it came in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna again, I'm gonna timestamp everything. So it's like packaging, dust bag, bag itself, materials and quality. Uh, so, so we'll be able to skip to whatever point you want. So I hope that's okay. So this might be a long video, but there'll be timestamps. So this is the dust bag. 
and it's like this uh, off-white cream color dust bag and it's got Teddy Blake in it in black and I will say that the first thing I noticed about the dust bag was that oh it's pretty soft it's 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 pretty soft which was nice and it felt kind of thick but uh, on the inside the bag itself doesn't look uh, very very high quality either I <laughs> I feel bad saying this, it, it, it you know, but I, I want to be honest. It, it doesn't look high quality. There are, um, so there are like threads that are like peeling off of it and stuff. And uh, it's pretty, it's pretty like, it just, it's not, it's not the best quality uh, fabric, but it is, it is quite soft on the outside. It is a little rougher on the inside, which is odd because you'd kind of think you want the soft part to be touching the, the, the bag. And also the stitching is, is very strange on the bag. So it's like, I'm gonna try to find the best part to show you. So it get it's like wide for the drawstring and it gets narrow. So it's a drawstring, it's drawstring dust bag. I would say like maybe, you know, an inch, an inch thick sort of thing, like this this part with the drawstring. And then as it goes around the rim of it, it gets much narrower, you see? So you've got like this part and then this part is much smaller. Like it, it's just not a very well-made dust bag either, which again, the packaging is always an added benefit. It always is like a luxury addition. But again, Teddy Blake talks about being more um, affordable and maybe one of the ways they cut cost is the the packaging. That's 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 one of the ways that you might be cutting costs. Okay. For all I know, this is recyclable. I, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. I have no idea if this is recyclable. There's there's no anything about this at all. But it could be. And if it were, that'd be good. Recyclable packaging. I can understand why it would not be as like high plush quality as uh, in another another bag. So there's that. But that's a fact. Okay. So that's the packaging. The bag itself, I have to show you the bag. All right, so let's do that. So this is the bag. This is the bag I got. It is uh, a Vanessa 12 inch in the light gray. And I picked this bag actually for, for, two, for two reasons, for three reasons. I picked this bag because it was one of the bags that looked the least duped. I, as I said, I don't, I don't really need or want a, a dupe bag. I, I have bags that I like and I buy what I like, so I didn't really feel the need to get a bag that looked similar to another bag if I wanted that bag, you, you know? And all the other bags, like their clasps, looks really, really fiddly, which I, I wasn't super interested in. I also wanted, because I think I mentioned, I was planning on giving this away, so I wanted something that was like more everybody's taste. Like I feel like, you know, an open like kind of tote bag would be a good bag for like a lot of different people, so many people could be you know, have it and use it, and uh, that would be good. And so, yeah, so I didn't want a dupe bag. I wanted a, a, a like a universal kind of anybody might like this bag. And then I also wanted to make sure that I got a bag that had contrast stitching. So notice that this is light gray, and then the stitching is white. So I wanted to make sure that I had contrast stitching so I could observe the stitching and make that part of my observation in terms of the, the quality and, and materials of the bag used. So it's it's cute, uh, first of all. It's, it's, it's a cute enough bag. I think it's like a, a pretty easygoing style. It, I, I happen to like this color, so I, I picked this color hoping that other people would also like this color, but I didn't really want black because it was, you know, the same color stitching. So I picked this color. The first thing I thought of when I took it out of the desk bag is, oh, the bag is what smells. This is a very um, odiferous bag, shall we say. It does not smell good. It does not smell like leather. It smells very like chemical, and I don't like having it so close to my face, but that's okay. We'll, we'll, we will deal. The second thing I noticed was the construction was fine. And when I say that, I mean I am judging this bag based on its cost, okay? So this bag currently costs something like $400. In fact, I will get you the exact price right now. So Teddy Blake always has at least two different prices on every single bag. There's a crossed out price, and then there's like the non-crossed out price. And I looked at their FAQ, and the way it works is that the crossed out price is according to Teddy Blake, how much the bag would cost if it were made by any other manufacturer with the same kind of quality leathers and the same handmade artisans and, and stuff like that. And then the actual price is Teddy Blake's price. So this bag is crossed out price listed for 750 USD. So Teddy Blake is saying that this bag is worth 750 dollars. 
but you are only paying $409. So like $410 for this bag. So they're saying that this bag is worth $750, but you're only paying $410 for it. And that's where a lot of my hesitations and also issues come into play. Because if this bag was being sold at a, a department store or at TJ Maxx or something, if this bag was sold at TJ Maxx, I wouldn't really think twice about it being listed for TJ Maxx prices. Right off the bat, I'm not, this, is, this is not a $400 bag. This is not a $700 bag. This is not a $400 bag. Absolutely not. I, no. <laughs> I'm gonna explain why, but this bag is 100%, in my opinion, in my opinion, and in my opinion, knowing about leathers, in my opinion, owning luxury, and in my opinion, owning contemporary bags, like I love coach, I buy coach bags. In my opinion, this bag is 100% not worth $400. <laughs> At nowhere near that. I would, I honestly, I would have trouble calling this a $200 bag. Uh, honestly, like, I'm gonna get into the details in a minute, I'm sorry, but like, I, I, you know, so we're not like, wasting too much time. Honestly, um, first impressions and then second and third impressions after I really looked over the bag, I would not buy this pretty much at all. I would not spend money on this. I got it for free, so good. But if I had the choice between buying this bag for $200 and buying a coach bag for $200, I would buy coach. And if I had a choice of buying this bag for $100 and a Coach or Kate Spade bag for $100, I'd buy Coach or Kate Spade. So for the price point where like we're talking about like $400 is kind of Coach prices pretty much, or even less is Coach prices depending on what you're getting, Coach outlet even, I would buy a Coach outlet bag over this. And that's saying something really if you've been on this channel before because I don't have the highest opinion of coach outlet quality. I, I actually have some comparisons for you. I'm going to do a comparison you know, later on. Again, timestamps are your friend, I suppose, if you don't want to watch this entire video. If you've gotten this far, uh, please leave an emoji of like a penguin or something. If you watch the entire video, please leave an emoji of a penguin. That'd be fun to see who has watched the entire thing of this. But yeah, so I, I, I would buy a coach outlet bag over, over this. And you can get like large coach outlet bags for about hundred something dollars on sale. And I, you know, if I saw this in TJ Maxx for like 50 bucks, I kind of understand the price point, but I wouldn't buy it because I could just spend a little bit more money and get something from coach that's arguably better. And I'm going to explain myself, <laughs> but like even just smelling it, like smelling it is not a pleasant experience. And that's arguably like the first impression you get of a bag like even before you like see it you smell it because like if you pick it up like if that's you you smell it because it's got an odor anyway okay so <laughs> that's a lot of talking about uh how uh kind of unimpressed i am this is a very controversial video i'm sure uh, i don't and I, I don't mean to say like again this might just be this bag i don't know like, i don't mean to say that anybody else who's talked about teddy blake is not being truthful Maybe they really had a good experience or maybe their bags are better or um, the bags like older bags might have been made differently than newer bags or maybe I just got a dud, I don't know. But this is, yeah, I can only make an impression based on what I'm seeing and so this is what I'm seeing. So, okay, so this is a, a Vanessa 12 inch in the light gray color and it is being sold for 410. And this is according to Telly Blake, made in Italy with a semi-rigid textured calfskin leather, a real suede interior, gold tone hardware, and palmoletto crust. So the, it's, it's, an, it's a tote style bag. It's like a kind of a small tote and it's got this like little charm on the front that just came with it, which is cute. And it's got this little snappy that keeps the handles together, which is a really nice design feature actually. I appreciate that. You unsnap it, the handles come apart. And then it also has a shoulder strap. And so we're gonna just go to this bit by bit. It does not smell good. <laughs> the, the hardware is very lightweight. The, the hardware is very lightweight. Like this, this weighs almost nothing and it does have like what looks to be a fairly uh, sizable like metal ring and it weighs almost nothing. Like the ring weighs nothing. And if you can hear that, like that feels, that sounds more plastic than anything else. In fact, let's knock it against another piece of the hardware, shall we? So like, I 
That doesn't really sound like metal on metal. And in contrast, like I have this strap from a Coach Outlet bag, which I'm, again, I'm gonna be doing some comparisons, but this is a Coach Outlet bag, right? Like you hear that? That's like, these are kind of weighty versus the Teddy Blake ones, which like they're, they're just very lightweight and flimsy. I mean, you know, it just, it, this is much heavier than this and it's not like very heavy. It's, it's just, it's heavier than this one is. That's all, that's all I have to say. The, so the hardware is uh, fine. First thing I noticed about the strap is that it looks like it's kind of broken. And this was like, I just, I unwrapped the bag from plastic so I didn't really touch it, but like you've got these, the little uh, rivets to adjust it, you know? Um, this one, this one, and then this one, which like kind of looks split open and you see how the leather is kind of rippling around it, like buckling kind of weird. And I think it's because it wasn't pulled through all the way, but uh, let's see. So now that I, I pulled it through all the way, so you see how here the leather is like smooth and, and flat. And then here it looks very like ripply you see that there's th that difference and that is not great it just it's not the best sign of, of quality just the way that it's rippling and then the next hole the next hole has like a little bit of a split but it's not fully separated so you see how it's attached on the top so i, I would have to like snap that open in order to use that one because it's not fully separated, which is odd. Kind of same thing for the one underneath it. It's, they're both like, they're, they're not fully separated. So, okay, you know, it's true that straps are usually made of, of offcuts or, or less quality materials just because they're, you know, they're straps. They don't have to be like, they're not the star of the show. So that's, that's understandable, you know, in, in some capacity. If I take this buckle off of the one that looks really warped and I see underneath, this was very, you know, nice of Teddy Blake to show me this part um, in a way that I could see it more illustrated. But you see how it's like open this way and it looks kind of like not not great. It looks like, you know, it's pieces glued together, which, you know, there, there are two layers to the strap, obviously. There's the, the top and the bottom layer and you can tell that they were stitched together because there are the stitches stitching the top and the bottom layer together. And then it was gla glazed to hide the edges. But the thing is that there's like a line in the glazing. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Yeah, you see this like little shadow in the glazing. So the glazing itself is kind of um, not enough to disguise the fact that there are two pieces of leather smooshed together. And I will say like a lot of leather straps are two pieces of leather glued together and then stitched together and then glazed to cover that. Um, this, this coach bag, for instance, is, is the same. Because there's no raw underside, it has to be two layers of leather because if it was only one layer of leather, there would be a raw underside and that's not the case in this one either. It's not good looking and it does, it does look pretty it does look pretty cheap and it does look pretty flimsy and I'm gonna actually manipulate this a little bit so you can sort of see it a little bit better here. Yeah, you see how it's kind of bubble gummy texture a little bit, you, not not great. You just, it's exposed and it looks odd. It does, it does look like suede from what I can tell, but it's not, it's not great quality. It, it isn't great quality at all. I, I would, did not call this a strap that it should be on a $750 bag or a $400 bag, like, mm -hmm. but it's fine. I mean, it's, it's fairly, I don't think that the glazing is the best job, but it's fairly evenly done. You know, I don't have a lot of complaints. There are some areas in the glazing where there's like extra texture. Yeah, you see those little speckly bits here. So it's like this dappled effect from the glazing not being laid smooth. So there's just this extra texture, which, you know, I notice it does feel rough on my fingers. It might catch on like silk pieces, like delicate cloths. I could definitely see this catching. So that would be something to be aware of. It's not all the way around. There are parts that are smooth. It's just this part is particularly rough. And again, like I am scrutinizing this bag. I, I'm giving you as honest a review as possible. And if this bag wasn't 
being touted as a $700 bag or being sold as a $400 bag. If this bag was being sold as like, like a $50 bag or something, like that's different, you know? But they're saying this is a $400 value at least. They're actually saying it's a $700 value, but like, so I'm scrutinizing it for that reason. Hardware, as we talked about, it's pretty flimsy, it's pretty light. They do have some branding on them. There's Teddy Blake etched into the hardware of the handles on this side. They're just regular um, like claw claps. Nothing to write home about. They're gold tone, which is what they said. And they're pretty lightweight. And that's, uh, that's it. And yeah, and, and that's it. So that's the strap. And then the bag itself is gray with a, a suede, a suede interior. They did say that this was suede. This is what Teddy Blake said. It's a suede interior. And I'm gonna actually take this stuffing out. Okay, so it's a suede interior. It's like two holes and then like a middle zip compartment. Um, yeah, so a middle zip compartment. The zipper, zipper's fine. It sticks a little bit on the end, but like it's fine. It's a fine zipper, uh, also very lightweight. Um, and then it has snaps on the side to, you can open it up a little bit lighter. Like, and uh, it does have a clasp, like a little here, a little loop here and on the other side. So you could like wear it on your shoulder as a crossbody if you so uh, chose. And it's, it's, a, it's a nice size, it's a nice size. Again, I do think it's a pretty color. Where to begin? Okay, so the leather is very malleable. So it's very like soft but it's not soft in a way that I would call luxurious, if that's what I, I would, I could say. It's, it's got, it's got a very plasticky feel to it. Like, like, it just, it sounds very plasticky. Rubbery. It's got like a, yeah, it's got like a rubbery feel to it. It's not pliable in a way that I would call like soft, luxurious, squishy leather. I do want to state something that, I, well, I want to say something that Teddy Blake states um, in their description. So this is a semi-rigid textured calfskin leather with a real suede interior. And if I go to their FAQ and I scroll down all the way to what are Teddy Blake handbags made from, Teddy Blake states that their handbags are made from 100% leather materials. I couldn't find anything about the artisans at all. I, I did email Teddy Blake. I'm still waiting to hear back about that, but 100% leather materials. So here's the thing. When you say leather materials or genuine leather, I've talked about this in previous videos. I have a whole Let's Talk Leather series where I discuss leathers from other companies. I'm probably gonna put this video in, in that like little group, but I talk about what different kinds of leathers are. And genuine leather is not a sign of quality. So if you say genuine calfskin leather, you're saying, yes, this is calfskin leather and it's genuine, all right? If you're saying genuine Italian leather, you're saying this is a leather from Italy and it's genuinely from Italy and it's genuine leather, okay? If you say just genuine leather, or if you're saying leather materials, what that means is that at best, it is at best split leather, because if you have a better quality leather, you're gonna state that it's better quality leather, you're gonna say it's top grain leather or full grain leather or something like that. Genuine leather usually means split leather. Split leather is leather offcuts, and because uh, there, there are basically three different layers of leather, that will four if you count suede, but we're not counting that right now, but there are three different layers of leather. There's full grain, top grain, and split leather. And when you s separate full grain leather, you're cutting a hide down so it can be used because high grades are hides are very thick to start out with so you have to cut it to, to use it the top part of the hide is the top grain or the full grain leather and that's the, the good stuff basically and then the bottom part is the 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 split leather or the genuine leather genuine leather doesn't have to come from any specific animal they'll sometimes state what animal it comes from but it doesn't have to be told you don't have to be told what kind of animal it comes from it does not have a natural texture. The texture must be embossed onto the leather because the, the top part of the leather with the texture has been removed. So any split leather piece, the, the texture has been embossed onto it. It's also weaker. It has less strength and integrity. It has less um, longevity to it. It's just, a, it's a weaker overall type of leather and it is not a great quality leather because to have something be split, it means that they're either hiding blemishes 
are, are hiding, you know, contusions that the original leather had. It's, you know, the full grain or top grain leather has been sold to another uh, person or, or, or company or the materials are being utilized uh, elsewhere. Basically, a genuine leather piece is saying it is, it is leather. It is, it is leather. It's genuinely leather, but it's not saying anything positive. It's just a statement that this is, this is genuine leather. This is a genuine phone. It is in fact a phone. It's not telling you what kind of phone it is. It's not telling you where the phone is from. It's not even telling you if the phone works. It's just a genuine phone because it is in fact a phone. That's, that's, the, that's the same thing. And so that's not like, that's not a sign of quality. It's a statement of fact that this is in fact made of leather. Cool. Also, leather materials sounds really suspicious because leather materials can include bonded leather, which is a plasticized leather that smells a lot like plastic, but that just might mean where it was made. You know, I'm not saying this is bonded leather because I'm not going to take a scalpel to this because I would like somebody to be able to use it if they want to. But it, I, mean, or, or I guess, uh, do you think that I should take a scalpel to this bag and make a separate video about what it's actually made of and what's inside of it? Feel free to let me know in a comment down below. Yeah, so it definitely is not a high quality leather material. It is definitely leather probably, I think, but it's not good. It's not, it's not a good quality piece. The stitching is for the most part uniform, but there are definite parts of the stitching where I see flaws. Again, I'm, again, I'm, I'm being very picky about this bag because it's supposed to be a $750 bag. And for $750, I expect good quality because like you're going to get good quality from Coach Outlet in terms of like the stitching, you know, you're gonna get good quality from regular coach in terms of the bag construction. So this is something that I really noticed in the, the handles. I'm gonna see if I can't find the best example. On this handle, you might notice, so the stitching is pretty even all the way around. The handles are stitched pretty nicely, if you can see that, yeah. So stitched pretty nicely, you know, fairly uniform stitching. But behind the handles, there's like this, piece of like really like this is like this pile of spread basically that was like an offshoot that wasn't trimmed off but then got stitched back into the handle so it looks very messy behind the handle it doesn't super matter but it is kind of pulling loose in terms of just it you know it looks very sloppy it does not look well made and I mean, if this was, if this, I would probably have questions about the Italian artisan who made this bag in terms of, uh, I mean, I'm not tell, I'm not saying that their statements are false. I'm not saying that Teddy Blake is like not being truthful, but you can say whatever you want on the internet. I can say whatever I want on the internet. I could just say anything. I'm just trying to be as clear as possible at what I am saying. So, and here the stitching is also like, pretty, you know, pretty uh, messy looking, like very, a lot of, all, too much thread is being used for it to look clean and neat. But again, that's behind the handle, so it's not the biggest deal. You're not really seeing that and like more reinforcement is good. So maybe that's why that it was to uh, extra reinforce the handles because I mean, obviously you're, this is mostly a tote bag. So you're gonna be using the handles a lot. You wanna reinforce them with stitching and threads. Okay, you know, sure. But aside from that, the, the, the stitching is pretty even all the way around and the bottom is rolled in. So there aren't stitches on the bottom. It's basically like flipped inside out. And that's pretty good. Like it's not, it's not glazed on the bottom. It's not stitched. Uh, it's, it's very clean. That's, that's really nice. And it does have feet on the bottom. Feet are always very nice. The, the feet don't feel the best quality, but like you know, having feet is good. I would have preferred a fifth stud right here. So, cause the bag is pretty big. And like you put a big floppy bag on small feet, it'll usually sink into it. So a fifth stud here would have reinforced the bottom, but that's like just a, a stylistic thing. I didn't, I'm not a designer, what do I know? The bottom is pretty solid though. It's like, it's, uh, it's solid to the point that it's probably, you know, see here it's like reinforced by the, the pocket. The pocket does go all the way down and it uh, is attached to the bottom of the bag. Now, one thing I will say is that this part looks very nice, but you can see because it's unlined and it's only suede inside, you can actually see the, the bottom of the bag, the bag turned in. And I'm going to show some pictures of this because I don't think I'm going to be able to show it to you in, in, in the, the video, but it's, it's very hard. It's um, very scratchy. 
It is scratchy and hard to the point that I would be concerned about putting a leather, a smooth leather SLG in this because it is very scratchy. It's, I, I don't believe it's actually glazed. Let me double check. I mean, it's kind of glazed, but in a very messy, very haphazard looking manner. And uh, I'm being nitpicky, but it's something that I noticed, like if you put a smooth leather good into this, it's going to scratch. Like I, it's going to scratch against this. It's, it's very scratchy. I would be concerned, so I would not do that. So there's, that's just, as you know, just something I've noticed and something, again, I'm going to notice in the construction of this, this piece. It does have here, it's got Teddy Blake stamped, made in Italy, which, you know, if something is constructed in Italy, it can have that stamped on it. Cool, made in Italy. It's great when things are made in Italy in the luxury world. We have an idea of, you know, an artisan, handcrafting something in, in a certain way. I actually have a video that I'm going to be making soon about what handmade means and how much machine usage can be considered handmade and like our opinions and our ideas and our perceptions about what handmade actually is. I think that will be a really interesting video, so please stay tuned for that. Uh, subscribe for more content, by the way, if you want more content on this nature because I'm gonna do a lot of it. But yeah, so it, I mean, it's, it says that it's made in Italy. Uh, Teddy Blake corroborates that with their website. It says everything's made in Italy by artisans. There's zero information about that though. Like I couldn't find anything. And you know, that's just fine. And then the, the border of the top of the bag, like the rim of the top of the bag is also a little bit peculiar because it's glazed, but it's only partially glazed. Like the glaze does not go down into the inside. So this is also really rough because the glazing feels kind of unfinished. So like I, this kind of feels very scratchy um, in and out of the bag. The suede is not soft. It is, it is very, um, it's very sparse feeling suede, which is not, it's not great everyone. It's really, it's, it's not, it's not great. I'm I was excited to get this bag actually because I was really looking forward to doing a review because everybody talks these bags up so much. And again, this might just be this bag. Like maybe it wasn't glazed as much as it should be or, or something. Or maybe like I got a weird dud in terms of the the factory, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very unimpressed. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised actually. I'm a little surprised at how much people talk about Teddy Blake bags that this is um, what I got. Um, the zipper is metal. That's that's kind. That's cool. The zipper's metal, and yeah, it's it's um, it's fine. It's a fine zipper. Uh, the the construction of the bag is so like it the the two pieces meet and then one folds over the other. So it kind of has this like part in the middle where it like is sewn upon itself, which doesn't. I I personally don't feel that like that. That looks the best. I feel like there's a couple of different ways that you could do that, but that's how they chose to do it. So that's fine. The pocket is the texture of the outside of the bag. And then the inside of that is also the lined in the, the suede that Teddy Blake uses. And there's also this charm that came with it. And it's a cute little apple charm. I think it's pretty cute. It says Teddy Blake on it. I think it's a very cute little thing. It is not very well made, as you can probably see here from the stitching on the back and the buckling of the stitches and uh, especially here, like they're pulled very, very tight to the point that it's like pulling up out of the leather. And that's not a mark of quality, but it's like a little throwaway piece. You know, it's a little charm. It's not the best made charm, but it's like, you know, it's a cutoff basically. Like it's a way to use excess pieces of leather that could otherwise be thrown out. And so I don't think that that's bad. Like that's cool that they're using as much of the leather as they can. So that's that's pretty nice. If this bag wasn't being sold for $400 and being touted as a $700 bag, uh, I, I'd have different things to say, probably. I still have concerns about the quality. I do have questions about the materials, but you know, if it were less money, then it would be less of a big deal that it would be using materials and construction that uh, is relatively related to the amount that it was being uh, touted as being worth. I, I have actually a couple of bags to, to show you to, to compare this with. I think I mentioned this in the beginning. I have some coach bags I would like to compare this to you because as I said before, I would not buy this. I would not pay money for this. I got gifted this bag for my honest opinion. I'm giving you my honest opinion based on this being a $400 to $700 bag. I wouldn't buy that 
for that price. I wouldn't buy this for any price. If I want a good, relatively inexpensive bag that I think is at least worth paying money for, I'd go to Coach. I'd, I'd go to Kate Spade, honestly, uh, for this kind of color. Kate Spade does some really pretty grays. I wouldn't buy this. I'm <laughs> so controversial. I hope people don't get mad. I, Teddy Blake will probably get mad. I'm not going to be working with Teddy Blake anymore. That's probably true. So, okay. <laughs> So I have this bag here. This is a Coach Kip Turnlock bag. It's a little like kind of crossbody clutch. It's it's very pretty, like it's very cute. Uh, I'm borrowing this from a friend actually because this is the most recent Coach bag that I, I, I have. Well, my friend has because this is uh, bought. This was bought last year in in 2021, 2022. And so I'm gonna just take the strap off here. And this is a, this is um, Coach's Genuine Glove Tan Leather, their smooth leather. Now, Coach also calls their leather Genuine Leather, which uh, still, still means split leather, potentially. They, they might be saying it's Genuine Leather because it's Genuine Top or Full Grain Leather, and they're not emphasizing the fact that it's Top or Full Grain Leather, but they're saying this is just Genuine, and usually, again, when you say it's just Genuine, that's because you don't have any other things to say about the leather, so that's, it's Genuine Leather. I will say though, this leather and this leather, this is smooth leather, this is embossed. This leather is much better, heads and shoulders above. Like just, is there's no comparison. So this is a smooth leather bag and it is got like this little darn lock. The hardware on the bag itself does feel pretty high quality. It feels weightier, it looks better. The stitches are very nice. The Hardware all looks nice. The glazing on this is much smoother. Don't know how you'll be able to see because it it's black on black, but the glazing is much smoother. There are really no stitching issues that I can see. It's smooth, it feels good between my fingers. There's no parts that are catching. It's 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 made very nicely, and I'm not really I'm not feeling anything out of the ordinary from touching it. And then the bag itself, you'll see here that it is mostly unglazed. It's like glazed at the top of the handle, like the little cute little handle. There's like glazing on the edges, but it's mostly just sewn leather, which Coach does pride themselves on doing them. Coach does not use a lot of glazing in their bags, just like, you know, so there's around the edges. And this is not a suede line. This is fabric line, so I cannot demonstrate that as comparison. It's two layers of leather that are sewn together for this part because this is smooth leather on the front, smooth leather on the back, so this has to be two layers of leather sewn together. It feels good. It feels good in the hand. This is not a bag that I think would last like 20 years, like Vintage Coach smooth leather could, but this is a good bag. I think it's a, it's very, a cute bag. It's very attractive, and the leather looks nice. The leather feels nice. The stitches look all good. There's nothing about it that really makes me think that this isn't worth the $225 that it costs. I actually, I should know this because I actually gave this as a gift to my friend. This, I'm borrowing it from her because I don't own it, but I, I gave this to her as a, a Christmas present last year. So <laughs> I do clearly stand by it. It's a very pretty piece and it's totally her aesthetic. So it's a good little bag. And I was, I think I got it actually on sale. So it was a little under 200, but I would have paid 225 for this. I, I think it's worth it. I think it's, I think it's good. I think it's a good bag. And I don't think that there's a comparison between these two. Like $225, $400? No, absolutely not. Again, this is a bigger bag. Okay, you're getting more leather, fine. Still $400 for something that smells and feels like chemical plastic. But okay, this is Coach Genuine Leather. This is arguably some of their most high quality leather that they put out now. And it's, it's, beautiful. I, I think it's very nice. Okay, let's let's move this aside and compare this bag to what I think is the closest I can come to in terms of comparison, which is this. This is a Coach Outlet bag. I've talked about this before. I've had this for a number of years. I really don't use it. Uh, it's just like not, a, I found out after that this is not a great shape for me. But this is also, this is a bag from Coach Outlet. It is um, the kind of Sapiano like textured leather. It is, it is textured kind of in the same way this is. They both have like the handles. They're relatively the same size. This is like a little thinner, but they're relatively the same size. So I'd say, you know, that these are both like 
equal-ish in terms of, you know, price. I got this pre-loved for about $100, but I think it retailed for, again, like something like $200 or $250. There's this little slip pocket in the back that's fabric lined and it's got two zippers to like unzip it, you know. And this is, because it's an outlet bag, Coach actually uses a lot more glazing on their outlet pieces. So this is pretty heavily glazed. You can see it's all this, like the black over here and here, you know, this is all glazing. It's not the cleanest, I will say. It's some, some of the parts, the glazing like kind of uh, wiggles outside of the lines. If you can see that here, like it tied up kind of wiggles outside of the lines, but the glazing itself is smooth. There are not any rough bits or edges. It, there's a lot of glazing and I don't see any problems with any of the glazing on this bag. I've had it for several years. I don't really have an issue with the glazing. It's also got feet on the bottom and the same thing, like it doesn't have one in the middle, which would be nice, but this is a rigid structured bag, so it doesn't really have a problem either. Hardware is a little bit lighter than the coach, the, than the coach kip. This is, this hardware is definitely more substantial than this, but this hardware is more substantial than this hardware. Absolutely. The bags weigh about the same, which makes sense. They're both leather bags. This is, and they're both fairly large. This again is leather lined, but there is still like a lot of hardware in this because this is like a full zipper on the top and like the handles and stuff where this is like, there's a lot less hardware in this. It's just mostly leather and it's, it's, it's really hefty. But the difference is, in the bags in terms of construction. Glazing in this one is better. Hardware in this one is better. Heft is about the same. Odor, uh, scent, uh, this one smells worse. This one actually is kind of like a non-scent. It doesn't smell like leather, but it also kind of doesn't smell like anything. It's not, it's not offensive. This is offensive. Uh, it's, it's, this is not it. The, the structures are also like, this is a more rigid structure. And you'll see that the handles, like, you know, they obviously flop because they've got the little D-rings, whereas these handles stay up. And this is like semi-rigid, so it's very squishy. I still think that this is a better bag. This, the leather feels better. It feels stiffer because this is, a, you know, this is also a stiff embossed leather than this. This is a floppier leather, but this does not feel floppy in the way that quality leather feels floppy. It doesn't feel good, guys. It's not, it's not good. And if I had to choose between these two bags, I mean, I would honestly, I like this color better. I like the shape better, but like, quality materials, workmanship, I'd take this hands down. I would take this, I, I'd take this new more than I would take this new. And if you think about it, vroom vroom. And if you think about it, I mean, this bag was, again, I think probably sold for something like 200 new. And then Coach Outlet usually has like sales or you get like 50 or 60 or 70% off. And then sometimes you can even put sales on top of this. So this, this might well have ended up being something like an $100 or $150 bag, whereas this is being sold for $400, being touted as a $700 bag, which I cannot get over. If this was being sold at Coach Outlet prices for like $200 on sale for 50% off $100, okay, I, I still wouldn't pick it, but I would understand. Like, okay, you know, fine, $100. I, I'm not a fan of fast fashion pricing. I'd rather pay more for quality. I'd rather pay more for slow fashion, something that was made in, in unsafe practices from uh, workers that are not treated well. I'd rather pay more money if I knew that was going to the workers. And so if this bag was being sold at like, you know, $200, and I knew that that was because the bag was being well-made by people paid properly, you know, all right, I'd, I'd take it. I don't care where the bag is made. This is made in China. If this bag is made in China by Chinese workers or whoever who are paid fair wages, I don't care that's made in China. I'd rather it be made in China by people paid well than in Italy by people who, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, they don't tell me, they don't have any information. I'm just saying like, I'd, I'd pay $200 for a bag of this size and, or I wouldn't pay. I'd understand $200 price tag on a bag of this size, of this quality, you know, whatever, if the people were paid well. I don't know if that's the case. I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying that it is. I don't know. But I, I would rather pay more knowing that the workers were paid fairly and treated well, treated fairly, you know, all that stuff. So, okay, I could understand if this was a $200 bag, but it's not that. It's double that. It's double that if you take Teddy Blake at its word. Coach is not telling me that this is a $700 bag and they're marking it down to $400. They're telling me that this is a $200 bag and they're marking it down to 100. This, there's a difference, right? There's a difference. I'm, I'm repeating myself, but that's where I think my biggest quandary comes into play, which is the pricing. 
I got this bag for free, you know, that's the best price you can possibly get and I still don't like it. The, just the odor alone is offensive to me. And maybe again, I'm a, uh, this is a dud, this was a fluke, sure, fine, perhaps. But there's a lot about it that doesn't endear me to it. And a lot of that is the glazing because the glazing is very rough in places. And like, I can overlook stitching, right? Like again, like this, the, the, the issues with stitching are like inside and hidden. And like, sometimes you gotta do that when you make things. Like I sew, I know how sometimes you gotta hide bad <laughs> stitches, you know, like sometimes that's just the, the make of the, the product. But there's a lot of unfinished glazing on this and that can damage things inside the bag, which is not great. And the, the bag construction itself, it doesn't seem like something like on the handles. Remember, this does not look like it will wear well. This does not look, quality. This does not look luxury. And if they're telling me it's a luxury brand, then they should be telling me that and then putting their, you know, their money where their mouths are in terms of, you know, all that, the stitching and stuff. Where do I stand in terms of, you know, Teddy Blake versus Coach Outlet? Coach Outlet. I mean, obviously spend a couple hundred dollars more and you can get a really nice Coach tote from regular Coach with even better leather. I, I have to make a video. Actually, I'm making a video soon. Probably it'll be coming out like more in uh, November because I just I have a lot of videos that I'm, I'm making, but like stay tuned for that because I'm going to be making a video where I compare all Coach leathers that I have the ability to get my hands on. So I'm talking about like vintage Coach to modern day, the, the smooth leather, the pebbled leather, the embossed, the Coach from like 2018, Coach from 2021, like all that. I'm gonna do an entire video dedicated to Coach leather, so stay tuned for that. But between these two, Coach, 100%. Coach uh, regular as opposed to Coach outlet, Coach obviously 100%. Where do I stand on this bag? So again, I can only say what I've observed from my experiences and I don't think this is a bag that's worth your money when there are other bags that are just as good, if not better, for about the same amount. $400 can buy you again, like a really nice coach bag. I personally would not buy this bag. I, I can't endorse it. I, I don't know enough about Teddy Blake because they don't have enough, they don't have a lot of information actually out there for, for, for free to, to just find. Like you go on the website, they're like, you go to the FAQ, like where is your leather made? They're like Italy, I'm like cool, anything else? No. If you have stuff to brag about in terms of where your materials are from, if they're ethically sourced, usually you tell people that, right? You show them, like you show your credentials. If you have a carbon neutral company, you very proudly stamp that carbon neutral certification everywhere. If you are B Corp certified, everybody knows that you're B Corp certified. Like there's no question. If you have something to be proud of in terms of like ethically sourced or sustainable or like artisanal uh, support, like you tell people that in as clear, concise words as possible because you're proud of those facts. If you're just saying like, Italy, ethically sourced, but you're not telling me how or why, you can say anything you want on the internet. I'm not doubting that it's true necessarily, but there should be more information freely available if that's what you're basing your brand on, right? Like if you're just like saying, it's good leather, here you go, um, and you're not telling me that it's ethically sourced or, or whatever, like, okay, like I'm not expecting it to be ethically sourced necessarily. I would hope it was, but like I'm not, you're not telling me it is, so I'm not expecting it to be. But if you're telling me that it is ethically sourced, I expect there to be very obvious, upfront, easily accessible information about how. Hi everybody, it's me from the future, two weeks in the future to be precise, because I actually, after not finding any information on the Teddy Blake website, I emailed Teddy Blake asking for any documentation in regards to their ethically sourced leathers. They said, oh sure, we'll get back to you. And then it was radio silence for almost two weeks. And I honestly thought that I was gonna put this video up without having any response from Teddy Blake at all. But I did literally just get an email from the person I was communicating with, with the most ridiculous response I could possibly have. Like, I don't even believe it. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly a little bit mad, but like amused, but also mad because they, I don't, I'm, I'm a little insulted actually. So, okay. So basically what happened is I wrote, you know, I, I received the bag. Thank you for sending it to me. I wanted to ask Teddy Blake prides itself on its luxury ethically sourced Italian leathers. 
but I couldn't seem to find any documentation on your website in regards to the kinds of leathers used for your products or how it's ethically sourced. Would you be able to provide me with this information? And I sent that September 9th, okay? And then September 12th, I got a follow-up saying, oh sure, we'll get back to you. And then it wasn't until literally September 23rd that I got a message from them. Like, so again, like almost two weeks, my goodness. And the message is, hi, I hope you are well. Unfortunately, we don't have an official document. It's just that we do ethically source them as we use skins that come from beasts that have been grown for another purpose and we use the skin. No beast is killed just to use the skin. The leather we use is calf skin. Um, okay. First of all, yes, every leather made from cow is sourced that way. That is not special, that is not unique, that is not clever, that is not new. All leather in the leather industry is a byproduct of the meat industry, all of it. So, uh, well, not all, all cattle leather, all leather that comes from cow is a byproduct of the meat industry. So if you have a leather item, that cow was killed for meat, and now the skin is being used as well. So it's not like just garbage in the waste system. It's it's being utilized, it's being repurposed, which is good, you know, if that's how, it, that's a cycle. Okay, sure. So Teddy Blake's saying that their leather is ethically sourced. That's not what that means at all. They're not saying that the cattle was treated a certain way. They're not saying that it was housed or, or prepared a certain way. They're not saying that the factories that the cattle went through or the people working with, they're not saying any of that. They're just saying, yeah, it's a byproduct of the meat industry, which yes, all cattle leather is that actually though. So that's that's one thing. So that's one part of the letter. And then the rest of the letter is, can you please let us know where you read the part about us using ethically sourced Italian leather? On your website, proudly on your website, all over the place. Like that's, that's on, that's, it's everywhere. It's, you said, you, 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 you said it. You, you, I don't, did this happen? Did this actually, did this? Anyway, back to uh, past me, who has not yet uh, received this information. Have a good time. And there is not enough transparency for me to be able to know the, the, those things. In terms of, you know, the bag itself is not for, it's not good. I don't mean to be this, like, I, it sounds like this is such a negative video. It's like bashing, just bashing Telly Blake. <laughs> no sponsors ever want to work with me again. <laughs> this wasn't sponsored anyway, so that's good because uh, I don't think that that would fly in a contract. But the main thing about this is I wanted to give an honest opinion about every single factor. And as I keep stating, a big factor is the price, what they claim and what they portray their brand as. And I do have a lot of questions. I would love to hear your opinion. If you've bought Teddy Blake, please let me know your experiences. Like, did I get a dud? Because that's also possible. I might've just gotten like a bag that was just like, we don't know how it got in the bag. We're sorry, we'll send you a better one that's actually better and smells not as terrible. <laughs> like I might've gotten a dud. If you have a Teddy Blake bag, you purchased a Teddy Blake bag. If you bought a Teddy Blake bag, please tell me about your experience. Did you like it? Do you still have it? Have you found that it wears well? Like, please share what bag you have, like why you bought that style, how much you paid, because maybe price is a factor. Like Petty Blake has sales like all the time. So maybe you bought your bag at 75% off and it was only a hundred dollars. And at a hundred dollars, I'm willing to be way more forgiving, you know? So it's a give and a take. Do I think that, you know, there, there should be like a, a compromise on how much something costs to make sure that the workers are being treated fairly? Yes. But also if it's a fast fashion creation, then I don't expect higher than fast fashion prices. I'd prefer slow fashion and higher prices, but like I also understand that that's not accessible to everybody. I, I come from a place of privilege being able to buy more expensive things, so that is also something that I take into account. But you know, in terms of like buying a contemporary luxury brand, like go for coach, buy, buy coach, don't, don't buy this. <laughs> I was trying to wrap up and I got off on a tangent again. Yeah, so um, yeah, if you have a Teddy Blake bag, please tell me your experiences. If you, I don't know, if you had good or bad experiences, like please share in the comments. I'd love to have foster a discussion about this. Do you think that I was too harsh and too negative? That's entirely possible. Um, do you think that I should have been less stuck on the price and also entirely possible? <laughs> Feel free to share your opinions down below. Would, would you be interested in me reviewing more uh, heavily sponsored or heavily gifted brands? Like 
I know that uh, Pollen is heavily gifted and I have not been approached by Pollen. If I, if, I, if I wanted to review a Pollen bag, I'd be buying it with my own money most likely. But like I know that there are a lot of brands like like Teddy Blake, for instance, like Pollen that are heavily gifted. And so we often only hear the glowing positive. And I've, I've done the same. Like I have been sponsored by some brands and I've talked about them in like glowing terms. And that's because I only accept sponsorships from brands I actually believe in and uh, like and support. <laughs> Like that, that's just how it is. I would not support a brand or accept a brand sponsorship if I didn't believe that their content or their product was worth promoting because I don't think that is truthful or fair to people watching the review looking for an honest review. That doesn't make any sense to me. So all that to say, I hope that I didn't come off as too harsh, but you're welcome to tell me that I did. Uh, if you want more videos like this, feel free to let me know like who you're interested in seeing me cover, or I guess, or, or anything like that. If you did watch this entire video all the way through, please do feel free to leave an emoji of a penguin letting me know that you did. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of just, uh, I'm nervous about this video a little bit. Can you tell just to like duck to touch? Because I do feel like it's controversial. Again, nothing against anybody who's talked well about Teddy Blake. Who knows? Maybe I got the, the weird one. I do often get lemons. Sometimes I get, sometimes I get some scores. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I get some really nice stuff, but often I get lemons. So I don't know. I'm gonna have to wash my hands. Oh gosh, it's just blah. Anyway, anyway, that's enough of that. <laughs> if you like this video, please do give it a like. It super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content that helps the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.